Today, I'm gonna give you seven videography tips for beginners. Now, before we start, I want you to know that these are not the usual videography tips, like use different camera angles or use an ND filter. No, these are different, and I'm sharing them with you because of what I see here on YouTube, and what I read in the comments, and emails I get also, because it seems like there's a lot of brainwashing going on, and you know, when it comes to your brain, you don't want it washed, you want it dirty, yeah. So, here we go, I'm gonna make your brain dirty again. You're welcome. Look, YouTube is a great place to learn pretty much anything, right? But I've noticed that a lot of people are doing it wrong, learning something. Because, yeah, sure, they're watching a ton of videos, tutorials, whatever, and then they practice what they've learned, what they saw in those videos, like camera moves, for example. But that's where it stops. They're not putting what they've learned into actual practice, because practicing something in your garden is not the same as putting it into practice. And what I mean by that is that at some point, you have to bring everything that you've learned in different videos, lighting, composition, gimbal moves, you have to bring all that together by making an actual video. A short film, a travel video, a commercial, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. But not a 15 second video showing five camera moves you've learned last week. You know what I mean? That's not putting it into practice. It's practicing, but it's not putting it into practice. I hope that makes sense. So you have to make an actual video with an idea, a concept, a story. And a lot of you are not doing that enough. And some of you are not doing that at all. There, I said it. I've mentioned this a few times before in other videos. This is YouTube, and even though it's a great place to learn stuff, you always have to remember that this is YouTube, and sometimes, I mean, a lot of times, it'll give you a distorted view on reality. Especially if you're a beginner and you're still learning the very basics. And so, yeah, I see many, many beginners getting brainwashed. And then you get discussions in the comments like, you know, someone saying, oh, you have to do it like this because my favorite YouTuber said you have to do it like this. And then someone else replies, no, that's wrong, because my favorite YouTuber says you have to do it like this. But what they're not realizing is that they're both right, because it's all about context, right? And you also always have to know who you're watching, what's their background. Take me for example. Uh, first of all, I make mistakes sometimes. That's the first important thing you should always remember. I'm human, I make mistakes. But I'm also a photographer turned videographer content creator. And I also have my own style. And so when I teach you videography things or editing things, I teach them from my perspective with my style. But I've never been on a professional movie set, for example. So if that's what you wanna do and that's the information you're looking for, maybe you should go watch someone else, you know? Someone who has a background in making actual movies. Because some of the things I say might not apply to movie making. Know what I mean? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. You can learn a lot on YouTube and of course you can take advice from your favorite YouTubers. Usually they're professionals and they know what they're talking about. But you always have to remember that the, the information is condensed just because of how YouTube works. And you have to put every piece of advice in its context and also always be a little bit skeptical. Know who you're watching. Actually, do you know what the best way is to know if a YouTuber is reliable? No? Just check if they're using motion VFX. And if they are, then they definitely know what they're talking about. <laughs> no, okay, seriously. Uh, look, I've been using motion VFX for I don't even know how long now for all my videos and I still absolutely love it. And you all seem to really like it too because I keep getting comments asking me where I get my animated titles and effects. And Title Hype is my absolute favorite right now. I use it for most of my talking head videos and shorts but also M-Title Film or M-Title Cinematic for travel videos or short films. And the great thing about motion VFX is that there's something for everyone and they keep dropping new stuff all the time. M-Documentary and M-Diary look really cool and then the new M-Product, perfect for tech tubers or if you want to make a cool social media commercial. I really can't wait to try it out and of course I'm gonna show you the results. If you wanna try it out for yourself, the link is in the description and yeah, go check it out. And thank you so much Motion VFX for supporting my channel. Okay, and now back to the videography tips. I mentioned this tip also in my unusual photography tips video, but of course it also applies to videography. And look, I know that when I make videos about lighting, I always rave about blue hour and golden hour. 
That's in my opinion the most beautiful and cinematic light, the best time to shoot a video. I love it. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't shoot in the rain or in the mist for example, or in the snow. A very misty morning also looks really beautiful, but in a different way. It creates drama, there's a totally different atmosphere. And it's not just the weather by the way, also bad light is not always bad light, if you know what I mean. For example, we went to Greece a few months ago and one day we wanted to visit the Acropolis and some other hill. But we planned to go in the late morning and yeah, around noon. And I really wanted to capture everything on video, but I was a bit annoyed because, you know, the sun's so high in the sky, the harsh light, it's not my favorite conditions to shoot in. But I actually liked the results because it created a unique look, a very colorful and bold look that went well together with, with the whole atmosphere of the video. So yeah, you know, golden hour, Looks great, looks cinematic, but there's more than just golden hour. Yeah, this is a very important one for beginners because there seems to be this belief that a shallow depth of field looks more professional and that's absolutely not true. But it's just because it's a tip that a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers like to give. Use a wide aperture so that you get that shallow depth of field. It will make your videos instantly better and more cinematic. But no, that's not true. If the background is important, you should definitely not shoot wide open because people won't be able to see the background. So, you know, you have to learn when to use a wide aperture and when to close it down, when the story asks for it. And honestly, wide open, 1.4, 1.2, 1.8 even, for video, I almost never use it. Only in very, very specific situations. And also, closing down the aperture doesn't mean that your background is gonna look tack sharp all of a sudden. It doesn't work that way. It depends on the focal length and the distance to the subject. And so, yeah, 5.6, 7.1, will still give you a blurry background in most cases. Look, this was shot at f22 and there's still a slightly blurry background, right? So of course you can shoot wide open if you want to, but it doesn't make your video instantly look more professional or more cinematic. Quite the opposite actually. If you use it too much, it, it, it will look not uncinematic, un yeah. Experiment go your own way. And what I mean by that is, uh, look, when I was a beginner and I had to shoot something, a B-roll for example, of a product, I always searched for videos of other YouTubers and filmmakers to see how they shoot a similar B-roll. And then I would almost copy it. Now, if you're a beginner, that's okay. That's how you learn. You copy things from people that are better than you. But at some point, you're gonna have to develop your own style, right? And so I would highly encourage you to Sometimes, just go out without a plan, without a shot list, don't look at what other people are doing, just let the location and the subject inspire you and see what you would do. Even if it looks like shit in the end, that doesn't matter. It's a way to train your creativity and to, yeah, develop your own style. So I made a short not too long ago about my 85mm f1.8 and how I never buy the 1.4 or 1.2 versions of lenses because in my opinion they're too expensive. In my opinion. And a lot of times also overrated, in my opinion. But there's always people commenting saying that 1.4, 1.2 lenses are better than 1.8 lenses. But why? To me it feels like they're just brainwashed. because. Look, I've been using 1.8 lenses professionally for more than 15 years. I make money with those lenses. I've won awards with those lenses. Why are 1.2 lenses then better? I have no idea. Are they gonna make me more money? Damn, never thought about that. Maybe if I make a video or a photo with a 1.2 lens, people will pay me more for it. <sighs> I could have been rich, been doing it wrong. <sighs> no, look, maybe in some very specific cases, it's better to get the 1.2 or 1.4, but for most people, it's overkill. Trust me, it's overkill. It's not better at all. And the fact that it's 5% sharper in the corners at f1. Point, I don't know, whatever, that doesn't matter. If you have decent image quality and your overall image looks good, no one will notice that it's 5% less sharp in the corners. No one. Make sure your composition is good, your lighting is good, your story is good, you know, that's all that matters. Mm. What? 
you actually watched until the end of the video? I didn't know people still did that. Um, wow, this is awkward. I don't have a seven tip. Yeah, I just put seven in the title because, you know, I read somewhere that using an uneven number is better than an even number. But I only have six tips. Damn, I really didn't know people still watched videos all the way till the end, you know, with all their TikTok brains. But okay, yeah. Um, let's make that the seventh tip then. Uneven is better than even, yeah? And use it however you want. I really don't have a seven tip, I'm sorry guys. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, this is YouTube, a great place to learn stuff, but take everything with a grain of salt. Put everything in its context. Be a little bit skeptical also, you know, a healthy amount. And that will help you to learn pretty much anything here on YouTube. So keep your brain dirty, don't get it washed. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Salut.